Kicking up the second half of our presentations today is Laura Gerton. Laura is a professor of earth science at Penn State Brandywine. And Laura is also a passionate educator that cares deeply about increasing the scientific, geographic, digital, and information literacies of students who are pursuing non-science degrees. Laura has come up with some unique ways to weave together different disciplines in STEM and non-STEM fields which she will share with us in her talk, Stitching Through Science Communication with Quilts. Are you ready to go, Laura? Much. Thank you very much. And I would love to take all of you with me on a journey down the Louisiana Bayou. So let's go ahead and get started. And what we're gonna do is go back to March of 2018, where I, as a scientist and an educator and a communicator, has gone down and attended an event and came out of there with a whole new different perspective and way to communicate science that I was learning. So I went down to LUMCOM, Louisiana University's Marine Consortium, for an event that focused on the theme of coastal optimism. So now typically when you hear of Louisiana, you hear doom and gloom stories, right? So there's sea level rise and coastal subsidence and, and so many negative stories, but there are stories of adaptation and resilience. You have a renourishment going on, right? You have marshes that are being rebuilt and levees and structures that are being elevated and people that are succeeding and living in that environment. So when my week at LUMCOM ended and the sun was setting and I was off to the airport trying to think of when I flew home how I was going to share all the great information I learned at my time at LUMCOM. We get in the plane, we buckle our seatbelts, we back away from the gates, and of course there's a delay for the flight. And so because we had already backed away from the gate, we're all stuck in our seats. And you can't do anything, and you can't escape the person that's sitting next to you that all of a sudden turns to you and starts all the small talk. And so the lovely woman next to me says, I'm from Louisiana, who are you? What are you doing here? And we're still sitting on this runway. And I start telling her about coastal optimism and she said Christmas trees Christmas trees are absolutely amazing and I, I know I gave her a look because here it is the month of March and why is she talking about Christmas trees well it turns out in Louisiana for Jefferson Parish it's one of the locations where after the holidays the local residents nonprofit organizations and the Louisiana National Guard comes together collects these discarded Christmas trees and places them in these pens or these crypts that are parallel to the shoreline but offshore so when there's storm surges or wave energy that comes in the trees actually lessen that energy trap the sediments and it reduces the erosion of the shore behind it and we've actually collected data on this scientists have actually shown it that there's still some loss but it's significantly reduced compared to the areas that are not protected by these cribs of christmas trees so hey Yay, Christmas trees. And so we, I finally get home and I walk through my dining room, which has been converted into my quilting room. And I see my grandmother's sewing machine on the table. And I'm like, could I, could I do this? Could I actually combine this incredibly passionate story about Christmas trees with sewing and quilting? Okay, how do, how do I do this? How do I move forward? Well, I'm gonna need some fabric, right? And so I needed some fabric that represented kind of coastal plants and, and I needed fabric that represented waves and of course, Christmas tree fabric too. And there's no pattern that exists to tell a story about Christmas trees on the Louisiana coast. So I made my own pattern and, and I want you to view this not as something that it, that is representing quantitative data, but think of the, these horizontal bars as you go from the top to the bottom of this quilt as a sequence in time where you'll see a lot of plants in the first bar and a little bit of water. But as you go down in time, you're losing some of the land and you're seeing more water. So you're losing your post as you're moving down in time through this quilt. Now, as you continue, you're going to get to this point where the Christmas trees have been established offshore. So now what's happening is, yes, you're still getting some land loss, but it's reduced. It's not that same volume of fabric 
that is getting lost as you move down the quilt. So this is the very first quilt I ever made that told a science story. And I have to thank the woman that was sitting next to me on the plane for inspiring me to think about how I could communicate science in a different way to new audiences. And I've started sharing my quilt on campus and at uh, informal science events in the Philadelphia area. And I've made even more quilts. I have a whole collection now that I call Stitching Hope for the Louisiana coast. And it's about all different types of stories, success stories, stories of coastal optimism, whether it be the invasive apple snail, but the limpkin bird is coming in and eating that, about how the Endangered Species Act has been able to protect some of these iconic species like the uh, American alligator in Louisiana swamp, how Native American tribes like the Point of Shen are adjusting down there. And so what I have found out is that Everyone likes quilts. I mean, who doesn't have a favorite quilt story or a quilt at the end of their bed? Quilts have opened a new door for me to be able to reach and connect with new audiences. And what I have learned too is I can't say too much in a quilt. I've got to keep that story simple. The fabric choice is key. People are attracted to these fabrics. The design uh, has to be simplified. Uh, but what I love the most is that once I tell this story in the quilt, everyone is snapping photos and then people are sharing this, that people are going forth and talking about the science. And that, of course, is the objective of science communication, right? Getting communities engaged and getting them talking about it. And I hope each of you will now share some stories about quilting science. That's just the best story. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you for sharing. And in case that wasn't enough, Laura has also been exploring more new forms of science communication during the pandemic, which includes posting weekly science facts on her front door for anyone who walks by. And so you can check out examples of Laura's local science field trips, as she calls them on Twitter. <laughs> awesome. 